Welcome back everyone. We're here again in Quito, Quito, Ecuador. Beautiful, sunny today, Quito, Ecuador. You can see beautiful blue sky, hardly any clouds, very sunny, very, very nice weather today in Quito. Beautiful. So today, because it's such a nice day, I think what we're going to do is we are going to go visit Volcan Pinchicha, the mountain, the famous mountain of Pinchicha, which is right outside the city here. And you can actually take a cable car, a teleferico, up, not all the way up, but most of the way up, and see a beautiful view of the city from there. In addition to that, we can talk a bit about the famous Battle of Pinchicha, which was like the culminating battle in uh, Ecuadorian independence from the Spanish. And it happened on the slopes of Volcan Pinchicha. So let's go. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. All right, so we're here in the station, Teleferico. It's up, uh, up a ways, we drive up a hill. Nice station in here. And the Teleferico is right there. It runs all the time, pretty much. But even from here, you can see a really, really nice view out to the mountains. There's like a little amusement park right down here. And uh, still a beautiful day. There's some clouds coming in, but man, very, very beautiful. I was talking to the, uh, the taxi driver on the way up here, and we were talking about how it's like, you, know, you never know with the weather uh, in Quito, especially now because it's sort of at the end of the rainy season. Um, but we got a really, really nice day today. So I think we're gonna hop on the Teleferico in just a second here. But um, one of the things that we wanted to talk about in this video in addition to uh, uh, in addition to just like seeing beautiful views of the city from up on top of the teleferico is the uh, the Battle of Pinchicha. Now uh, while I talk about this I'll flip the camera around so you don't have to look at my ugly mug you can look at the beautiful views but um, the Battle of Pinchicha I've mentioned in some of the previous videos um, uh, mainly the video about uh, the independence of Ecuador that we made in Cuenca the Republic of Cuenca and the Battle of Pinchicha is really, really important, not just to Ecuadorian independence, because it's really like the culminating battle of the war for independence here in Ecuador, but it really is important to the overall wars for independence in South America, because it's one of the last battles in, um, in South America. And in 1822, when the battle was fought, um, basically after the battle, Jose de San Martin, who had been leading armies for almost a decade from, um, you know, down in Argentina and through Chile and up into Peru. Uh, we made a video about Jose de San Martin. We also made a video about Bernardo O'Higgins and uh, Jose Miguel Cabrera, the, the Libertadores, liberators of um, Chile. I'll link those, descri those videos in the description. Uh, but, you know, he had made his way, he and his armies had made their way up from the south to the north, fighting the Spanish the whole way. And uh, during that time, Simon Bolivar and Antonio Jose de Sucre had, had uh, made their way with their armies from the north, from Venezuela, down through Colombia, and down into Ecuador. And in Ecuador, in the Battle of Pinchicha, that's basically where um, troops from both armies sort of met up and fought in the Battle of Pinchicha against the Spanish. There were um, armies from the Rio de la Plata, which is Argentina. There were armies from Peru. There were armies from um, Colombia and armies from here in Ecuador, from some of the cities that had declared independence previously, like um, Guayaquil. And so it's a very decisive battle, even though it was a kind of a small battle. There weren't very many troops involved and not a lot of casualties. And the battle only really lasted like three hours. Um, but because of it, the Spanish um, basically uh, retreated back into Quito, and then a few days later, they uh, surrendered to the to the Patriot forces, and Ecuador basically became 
at that point completely independent from the Spanish and uh, later uh, was absorbed into Gran Colombia. And this freed up um, uh, the armies of Gran Colombia under Simón Bolívar and Antonio José de Sucre. It freed them up to move south and into Peru to, uh, to defeat the Spanish who were still holding on in Peru. And uh, the battles in Peru in, you know, 1823, 1824, a few years after the Battle of Pinchichi here, those were like the decisive and final battles for independence in South America from the Spanish for the entire continent. So, uh, like I said, it's a pretty important battle here up on the slopes of Pinchicha. So, I think we should hop on the teleferico and we should go up there. And uh, when we get up there, we're going to see a beautiful view of the city. And maybe we can talk a little bit more about the Battle of Pinchicha itself. Because um, it's a very, even though it's a very short and kind of small battle as far as numbers, it's very interesting. So let's go up there and check it out. All right, so we're on the Teleferico and we got super lucky. We got here like just ahead of a large group of people. So we got the whole uh, Teleferico car to ourselves which is great because honestly, I feel like super um, uh, self-conscious about filming, especially in like tight, confined spaces like this. We took a teleferico up uh, Cerro San Cristobal in Santiago in Chile. And uh, we were in there with some other people. They were super nice, but uh, I felt weird about filming in there. I did film, but I felt kind of, I don't know, I felt kind of weird about it. So I'm really glad Oh wow, you can see like all the way up the mountain there. I'm really glad we got this, this whole car to ourselves. And if we turn around, you can see back down to the beautiful city of Quito. And like I've mentioned before in some of our videos here from Quito, it's, uh, it's all surrounded by mountains. It's in a, it's in a, in a valley flat plain surrounded by mountains just like pretty much all the cities up here in the Andes um, up here in the mountain part of Ecuador so we're going up still going up way 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 up there now Quito already is like when you're down there at street level Quito is already like nine about almost 9,000 or, or above 9,000 feet. It's like 2,800 meters above sea level. And going up here, uh, we're gonna be up even higher. I'm not sure exactly how high up we're gonna be above sea level, but it's gonna be pretty high. The Battle of Pinchicha itself was actually fought up above like 3,500 meters. So like what happened, and you can sort of see from here, um, that's south, by the way, that way, and that's the direction that the uh, the Antonio Jose de Sucre's army was coming. They were marching up that way from south, from like Cuenca, through Riobamba and Embato, and up here, they came up onto the slopes of Pinchicha. Oh, my ears are popping. <laughs> we're going up. But they came up onto the slopes of Pinchicha here, and they tried to basically climb the slopes of Pinchicha during the night and outflank the Spanish royalist forces that were down there in the city during the night. But because of some inclement weather, they were not able to do it. And they were, by the morning when the sun came up, they were exposed here on the slopes of Pinchicha. And it's a very, very bad position to be in militarily. And so the Spanish royalist forces made their way up and uh, to try to prevent being, you know, uh, outflanked and encircled in the city, they made their way up onto the slope and tried to fight a, uh, a battle here up on the slopes. Man, look at this view. This is crazy. This is, this is a thing where, un unfortunately, in a video filmed on a camera, a little handheld camera like this, through, uh, like, some plexiglass it's all kind of like dirty and scratched up you can't really like appreciate how amazing this view is from up here on a day like today where we're basically coming like right up to 
the bottoms of the clouds here. I mean, it's, it's, re it's really, really cool. And seeing the city like this, you know, a city that I've been in for a couple weeks now exploring. Man, it's really, really cool to see it from up here. You can see, actually, I can see the uh, uh, Catedral, Catedral uh, or the Basilica Nacional, Voto Nacional that we visited. I can see it from up here. What else can we see? Yeah, I can see the historical center. I can see Plaza San, San Francisco. All the stuff that we saw in like our first video here when we visited the Centro Historico. Wow, this is amazing. And of course, over on the sides of these hills that sort of like are on the east side of the city there, on the other side of the hill, there's some other places like over there, on that part, of, uh, over over that small hill, is um, like Sangolki, which is a small town that I'm actually planning to visit. So there'll probably be a visit a video about that. And then over on the other side of that hill, I think the airport is over there. Really cool. This is really amazing to see from up here, man. And you as you keep going up going up still even further as we keep going up and up the view just keeps getting like better and better because we get to see more and more of uh, of the city oh wow definitely definitely excited to see it from the very from the top top and I think actually I don't know it's kind of hard to tell but I think from the top here there's actually more cable car. I think you can go even further. I'm not sure. We'll find out when we get to the top. Man, it is cool up here. I'm really glad we did this today. I'm really glad the weather cooperated today because there have been a lot of days, not just here in Quito, but um, in, in, in all the cities that we've been to, in Cuenca and in Riobamba also, there have been a lot of days where the weather hasn't exactly cooperated. And, uh, you know, there have been days here in Quito where I've looked up to Pinchicha from down there in the city, and the whole thing's just covered in clouds and fog. So if we were up here on one of those days, we wouldn't be able to see anything. Man, this is, this is crazy. Beautiful city. Quito, Quito, Ecuador. So, oh, and over here, yeah, you can sort of see the tops of some of the other mountains through the open window here. Got to be really careful not to drop the camera out the open window. That would be like major disaster. All right, it looks like we're up sort of towards the top here. Hold on, let me switch seats. Up towards the top. There is, looks like an antenna station, all the radio and cell phone antennas maybe up here. Oh, my ears are really popping up here. I mean, we must have come up, I don't even know how far, look. Like how far, how far up are we now? Jeez, I wonder. Now, I don't know if we can get all the way to the top of Pinchicha here. Or if we're just sort of in like the the foothills of Pinchicha, right? I think to get to the top top you have to really hike up there. And I don't know that we're gonna do that today. But as you can see, like even up here at the station, like the clouds are pretty low. Like we're actually almost all the way into the clouds. Really cool. Alright, we're coming up on the station. Look, once we get to the station. I'm sure there will be like vista points up there where we can get a really good view of the city. So once we get there, we'll check back in. All right, so we are at the station up top. And uh, man, this is the view from up here. I asked uh, the attendant over there how high up we were. She said we're 4,100 meters up. So like I mentioned, the battle of Pinchicha was fought 
around 3,500 meters. So maybe basically like halfway up. And here we are, 4,100 meters. And it is significantly cooler up here. The air is very crisp. Um, and I haven't noticed it, but I know the air is much thinner up here. Um, but I don't think we're going to be up here long enough to have any kind of problem with altitude. Man, what a beautiful view, though. What a great day to come up here. Yeah, so over that hill, that's where I mentioned the airport is, and you can actually see it right there. Over the uh, that long strip, right? And uh, that airport is actually pretty new. It's a new, uh, a newer airport. I we flew into there when we came in from uh, from Lima. It was a really nice airport, actually. And we're gonna be flying out of there eventually. But for now, man, we can just enjoy this beautiful view up here. There's a little sign up here with the different volcanoes in Ecuador and like how how tall they are, right? And of course, we're up 4,100. Um, Cotopaxi, that's just south of, uh, of Quito. And then, of course, where we were in Rinobamba, Chimborazo, the uh, tallest mountain in Ecuador and the highest point at the top of Chimborazo, the farthest point from the center of the earth. Pretty cool. So we're right here in Quito, basically right on the equator, on top of a mountain, 4,100 meters up. You can almost reach up and touch the clouds. Super cool. All right, I think I'm gonna walk around up here a little bit. Some sort of a little visitor center maybe has some uh, interesting stuff to see. There may be some trails where we can walk just, uh, you know, locally around this area here and see what we can see. I mean, we might as well. Let's check it out. All right, so there's this platform here that uh, you can go out on from the visitor center, which uh, the visitor center it's actually basically just like a cafe and a little gift shop, which is cool. But you can pay a dollar to come out on this platform and get right out to the edge and see an even more amazing view of the city. And you can flip your camera around here and take a uh, beautiful thumbnail. Is that the thumbnail? Maybe we should do a different thumbnail. We should do like uh, one of these. Do a couple. We'll do a few. We'll do a few possible thumbnails. These are all terrible. I can't believe I've become a YouTuber. What am I doing with myself? One of those has got to be a decent thumbnail, right? We'll try maybe this. We came up to uh, the top of Mount Pinchicha, where the battle for independence of Ecuador was won. And what did we do? We paid a dollar to take a selfie. Still, it's a really, really beautiful view from up here. I mean, it's just, it's so crazy. You could see so far today too, you know, because it's a clear day, not, not too foggy up here. We can see all the way across the city, airport, mountains on the other side, which I can't remember the name of that mountain range. I'll put it in the subtitle. And then there's another valley on the other side and some more mountains on the other side of that. It's amazing. Great views from up here. All right, let's go back in. Let's go back in, see if maybe we can find, uh, I think there might be some little trails around the back side where you can go and, uh, and we can check out the other side. So there are some trails, some little trails that go 
like around other parts of the mountain here. There's another place out here where you can view. This is like looking south. Just to get your geography straight when you're up here where we were before looking down and the direction that we came up um, we're going to the uh, to the west so when we look back down at the city which is over there we're looking to the east and from here in this spot we're looking south down to like the southern part of the city Very, very cool. As you can see, like you can see for a really long way today because it's such a clear day, but the valley, right, where Quito is, you can see it extends all the way down. Big, beautiful valley, but as you can see also, surrounded by mountains, surrounded by hills, which I think, like I mentioned in a previous video, it sort of limits the size of Quito. Quito can't really expand um, all that much further because it's surrounded by all of these mountains. Looks like there's another trail that goes down this way. There's some outbuildings here. This one's empty. I think some of these are cafes. Maybe they used to be cafes. I don't know. I get the feeling from some of the buildings here being empty and also, um, I don't know, from some of the things I've read, like on Google Maps, that uh, there's not as much um, tourism coming up here as there used to be. And it kind of seems that way. There are a decent amount of people up here, but I don't know, on a, uh, on a nice clear day like today, late morning, I would expect there would be more people up here than I'm seeing. Yeah, it looks like there's a trail that goes out here to looks like a church. Let's go over to the church and see what's going on over here. Let's take care of nature. I agree. Let's take care of nature. So we're here at the church. Looks like it's locked up. It's all closed. I don't know if it's uh, permanently closed or if it's just closed right now, but I saw a sign here. Say Aquila Caballos. 10 minutes this way, which means we can rent a horse if we go 10 minutes that way. Um, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> this is not going to be a horse riding video, but um, I guess if you wanted to, you could. You could go down this uh, this trail away from the station the station's back up that way go away from the station 10 minutes and rent a horse ride around up here in the hills on a horse be pretty cool there's some hiking trails that go up that way one of them was like the trail of the llamas and there's another one that goes down that way i think it's the same trail actually you can hike that if you want to and you can see there's actually a peak just over the top of those trees Hold on, let's walk up to the curve here in the path. See if we can see the peak better. Yeah, there's a peak right out there. It's even higher up than we are and it's in the clouds. Pretty cool. We're not gonna go down the horse riding trail. Honestly, uh, I don't wanna ride a horse. And also, given the state of things up here with a lot of these buildings being closed I'm not super confident that there actually would be horses down there to ride I'm getting the feeling just a gut feeling that if we walked 10 minutes down that trail well I don't think there I don't think we'd be able to rent the horse I don't know maybe we would maybe we wouldn't but either way it's not not in the cards for today I will say, I just said, uh, oh, I don't think we're going to be up here long enough to notice any, any anything with the altitude. But uh, I'm a little more out of breath than I thought I was going to be up here. Um, which is important to remember 
when you're going to some place up at high altitude that uh, a quick change of, you know, several hundred meters in altitude, even if you're already, like, acclimatized, you know, we've been for almost three months, well, eh, well two months, we've been for, for a couple months um, up above 8,500 meters, or not 8,500 meters, 8,500 feet up above 2,500 meters, and uh, now just coming up here to 4,100 meters, you can probably hear I'm breathing a little heavier. Be careful with altitude. Be careful. So we can get a nice beautiful shot of the southern part of the city and uh, talk a little bit more about the famous Battle of Pinchicha because as we mentioned in the previous video what the video about um, uh, Ecuadorian independence and the Republic of Cuenca the battle for independence really started here back in the 18, 1820 in late 1820 there were cities Guayaquil in October and Cuenca in November of 1820 that had declared independence from um, from the Spanish and declared themselves to be independent republics and they actually these newly formed independent republics at the end of November fought a battle in Huachi which is like um, north of Cuenca near Ambato sort of near Rio Bamba and that battle was a disaster they lost to the Spanish royalist forces and they had to retreat and the majority of the forces retreated back down to Guayaquil and the Spanish actually came in and occupied Cuenca. Now a couple years under occupation, about a year and a half, um, the armies of Gran Colombia under Antonio José de Sucre had made their way to Guay Guayaquil and had um, allied themselves with the independent armies of Guayaquil and they made two attempts um, or uh, they, they made another attempt to go back up into the Andes towards Ambato, towards Huachi but they lost in the second battle of Huachi and had to retreat and in the third battle they uh, attempted a different strategy basically they massed a large, large mass of forces south of Cuenca. So much so that the royalist armies occupying Cuenca, being outnumbered, just retreated. And um, Sucre and his army were able to take back Cuenca without any battle. And then after that, they sort of pursued the royalist forces north through the uh, Andes here, the corridor of the Andes, where all of these Andean cities are located, all the ones we've been visiting, Cuenca, Rio Bamba, here Quito. They made their way north, and basically they, they occupied an area north of, um, north of uh, Cuenca, but south of Rio Bamba, and it cut the lines of communication and supply between the royalist forces in the north in Quito and the royalist forces down south in Peru who were still fighting against uh, José de San Martín and his armies coming up from the north. Now José de San Martín had uh, promised reinforcements. He was going to send reinforcements up here and so as those reinforcements arrived the entire um, collected army of the independent Republic of Guayaquil, the newly, um, the like the new the Cuenca uh, forces who were had been newly absorbed into Gran Colombia, the Peruvian forces and the forces from Argentina or the Rio de la Plata, they all combined and made their way over a period of a few months up through the Andes north. They fought a brief battle in Rio Bamba took over Riobamba and consider, continued to pursue 
the uh, Royalist forces all the way up north here to Quito. And the Royalist forces settled down in Quito, but they had uh, basically controlled all the passes through the mountains to get into Quito. And it was Sucre's strategy to try and flank and surround them up here at the tops of the mountains in the hills. And that's exactly what he was doing on uh, May 23rd and May, 20, May 23rd and 24th. Overnight, in 1822, he uh, and his forces attempted to climb up Pinchicha and circle around to flank the forces of the Royalists down in the city. But like I mentioned before, they didn't make it all the way. And when the sun came up, they were exposed. Exposed uh, along the, uh, um, uh, like out on the, on the face of the mountain, about halfway up, 3,500 meters. So the Royalist forces came up the mountain and met them in battle on the, uh, on the slopes of Pinchicha. Now, during battles of that era, communication was a real problem, especially communication amongst many different units from many different countries, uh, many different, um, you know, nations, essentially, right? You have Argentine forces, Peruvian forces, Ecuadorian forces, Colombian forces, and also volunteers from Great Britain, from Scotland, who had come to fight against the Spanish. And one of the problems was they were supposed to, the great British, the British forces were supposed to reinforce the Sucre's forces, but they didn't really know exactly when or if they were even going to show up. And in another twist, on the way up the mountain, the Spanish forces had split off a battalion, the Aragon Battalion, their like elite, elite forces, and sent them up to the very top of the mountain so that they would be in a position to be above the uh, Patriot forces and at a decisive point in the battle to come rushing down the mountain and break their lines from above. And uh, as that point in the battle neared, it just so happened that the uh, British forces, known as the Albion Battalion, showed up and managed to show up just in time to cut off the Aragon Battalion and stop them from flanking and breaking the lines of the Colombian or of the uh, Patriot forces, the uh, Army of Gran Colombia and, and Argentina, Rio, Rio Plata and Peru. Now, because they were not able to attack from above, the, uh, the Royalist lines were just weren't able to hold. The Patriot forces actually outnumbered the Royalists in this battle, and they were able, after a series of bayonet charges, to break the lines of the Royalist forces, and the Royalists retreated all the way back down into the city of Quito. They were pursued the entire way by uh, cavalry from the Patriot forces, mainly from the army of Gran Colombia. But they stopped at the outskirts of the city, and essentially, uh, the next day or the day after, they uh, they demanded um, that uh, the Royalist forces surrender, which they did. Now, the battle occurred on May 24th, and that's the day that's celebrated here as sort of an Independence Day, the Battle of Pinchicha Day uh, in Ecuador. Like I said, even though it was a relatively small battle as far as how many, how long it took, only three hours, and how many forces were involved, basically uh, less than 6,000 uh, troops uh, with all armies on both sides combined, it was still a very decisive battle for Ecuadorian in independence and in the larger scope of the battle for independence here from the Spanish across South America. So, I think it's time now that we hop back on the teleferrico and we head back down. We've seen a beautiful, beautiful view of the city from up here. We talked a little bit about the uh, decisive Battle of Pinchicha and the history. Um, it's starting to get a little cloudier up here and the clouds are not fluffy white clouds anymore. They're looking to be 
a little darker gray clouds and when I was over there on the other side I felt a raindrop so I think that means it's a sign that it's time to head back down the uh, head back down the mountain we'll check in when we get there so we're back down at the station and uh, the ride down just as beautiful um, a little different though the, there were some other people in the car so I didn't feel like filming didn't want to be rude uh, but also there was like a screen playing uh, ads and videos on a loop which we didn't have in the car on the way up so I think we got really lucky on the on the way up with not having any of that but down here uh, you can still see a pretty nice view of the city and the hills and that little amusement park that we saw before but I think that's gonna be where we uh, where we end the video we uh, we saw some beautiful views we talked uh, about a very important uh, battle in history here in Ecuador. Now, if you're coming here and you want to ride on uh, the Teleferico, it's $9 uh, to go up and come back down. And uh, to get out on that little platform where we uh, took our picture for the thumbnail, uh, that was an extra dollar, so $10. The cab ride from basically down like right in the dead center of the city by um, uh, Ejido, uh, which is like a park right in the middle of the city that was like three dollars to get up here it's gonna be another three dollars to get back down so all told like completely uh included sixteen dollars i say it's totally worth it especially if you can do it on a day like today i mean look at this beautiful beautiful weather right if you can find a day like today with a beautiful blue sky and puffy white clouds where the sun is out and uh you can get up here I would say do it um, I came in the late morning wasn't super crowded when I showed up but by the time I was heading back down uh, it was a little more crowded so uh, do with that what you do with that information what you will and definitely if you come here to Quito don't miss uh, the teleferico ride up to the top of uh, Volcan Pinchicha anyway hope you enjoyed this video and uh, there's gonna be plenty more videos uh, from here in Quito, so uh, stick around for that, and we'll see you in the next one.